Welcome to Transforming Lives. It's such a joy to come to your homes with the Word of God. And I believe that today what you're going to hear will transform your lives in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're ever in the city of Bangalore, I would love you to come and attend one of our services and I believe God will minister to you. The title of today's word is Defecting Disciples. Are you a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you a true disciple? or a part-time disciple. I believe that God wants us to give 100% commitment as a follower of Christ. And this word of God is going to encourage you in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Jesus Christ came into this world we know to make disciples of all nations and the Bible says in the gospel according to Matthew chapter 28 in the Great Commission that Jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit so both even in Jesus time and even today God is in the work of making disciples we are all disciples of Jesus Christ let me ask you this morning do you consider yourself a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ if you say yes are you a hundred percent lifetime disciple of God or are you a part-time disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ is your commitment a hundred percent commitment or a part-time commitment when things are good you are a good disciple when things go bad you grumble and you turn away from your discipleship qualities what kind of disciple are we and what are the qualities of a backsliding disciple and what are the qualities of a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ well with this type of introduction I want to give you the title of today's message is defecting disciples defecting disciples defecting is a secular term and uh, defecting in the dictionary means to abandon one's party if you are in a political party you abandon the congress party and you get into the bjp or that is called defecting a person who defects one's own stand and he gets to the enemy stand and then he becomes one among them and a defecting disciple is a disciple that abandons one's faith in christ jesus maybe temporarily for for or maybe for good and abandons the faith that he once stood for and then he goes goes to the world and the patterns of the world and aligns himself with the pattern and the styles of the world and if you clearly look into the church of Jesus Christ today there are people who claim to be disciples there are believers who claim to be disciples but sometimes backslide and uh, turn back from God and if you truly see there are only a few remnant of true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ okay and uh, such kind of disciples are mentioned in the gospel according to John chapter 6 and is verse 66 from this time the Bible says many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him from this time many of his disciples who were walking with Jesus who were fed by Jesus who saw the miracles of Jesus they turned back from Jesus and no longer followed him this is the saddest record ever written in the gospel it's a sad sad story in the gospel recorded for us that there were people who followed Jesus there were people who believed in him who who praised him and who wanted to make him king and uh, who worshipped him and who with Jesus 
and when the difficulties of life came and when problems came into the life they deserted and they became defecting disciples in the in in their own lives and uh, in this chapter in John's gospel chapter 6 we can find backsliding disciples we can find defecting disciples disciples who once stood with great vigor for God and somehow left God and lost the first love lost the zeal for God and now they had their coming to church is just a matter of convenience for them praying is a matter of convenience for them as the world has gotten so much for them that following Jesus doesn't become a priority for such people and these kinds of people then in Jesus time and even today are mentioned in many places in the New Testament and Jesus told the parable of the soil and the seed and uh, and uh, this type of uh, disciples are found uh, like the one whose the word of God was was sown in rocky ground and uh, and there was a little time there was emotional response and the plants grew up and uh, they were all hallelujah and praise the Lord uh, but uh, that commitment started to wither and die and uh, they did not have the commitment because the soil was not good and again in that same parable these are the disciples described as uh, the, the disciples who whose uh, the seed fell into thorns in between the thorns so it came out it sprouted up but the but the but the affairs of this world and the and the and the and the, and the lifestyle and the riches of this world choke them and they withered away and once they were enthusiastic once they grew in the lord but in the long term they could not be continue in their faith and they could not be a long time disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ it's good that we are coming to church it's good that we are worshiping God but deep within our heart are we truly a disciple or of Jesus Christ or not is my question to us this morning time again this is described for us in first John chapter 2 and it's verse 19 John is telling that they went out from us these were the people who came to the church who got baptized and who got involved in ministries and once upon a time they were being used mightily by God and after some time when the, when the, when the troubles came, sufferings came and, uh, and the things of the world got more prominent for them, they abandoned their faith and the Bible says they went out from the church of God. And the Bible says, but they really did not belong to us. What is John telling? They were in the church, they were worshipping God. And after some time they left the church. But truly, they were not real disciples. They were fake disciples for some temporary and momentary uh, things. They came to the church, got baptized, they worshipped God. But they really did not belong. And when the real problems came, they said goodbye to Jesus and his church. And they walked away from us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. You see, remaining in Christ, remaining into your calling, remaining faithful to God, continuity is the greatest characteristics of a believer and a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And are you and I remaining in Christ this morning time? Are we remaining as a disciple this morning time is the question. They would have remained with us if they belonged to us. But their going showed that none of them belong to us. It is a sad, sad reality in the New Testament church and even the church today that people spend time coming and hearing the word of God. They see signs, wonders and miracles in their initial stage of their spiritual life and then trouble sets them and they don't want anything to do with God or his word or the church. And it happens all the time. But what do we do? We need to persevere our calling. Persevere our continuance in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, such disciples are really found in the gospel of John chapter 6. And I'm going to get into John chapter 6. And going to give you the qualities of a defecting disciple. 
maybe we will identify ourselves with his qualities and this is a wake up call so that we can come back and tell god i repent of my my ways and i want to be a true disciple of the lord jesus christ if you go back from verse 66 to the first of this chapter you can find the qualities of this defecting disciples and that's why at the end of the chapter they are living the lord jesus christ number 1 what are the qualities of a false disciple or a defecting disciple they are attracted by the crowd you see they don't have a personal relationship with the lord jesus christ they are there where the crowd is there maybe there is a lot of people coming here on a sunday morning and some of them may come because there is a lot of crowd happening and uh, people love to have crowd have you seen there will be an accident on the way and there will be a huge crowd because where there is a crowd automatically people are attracted but there is no one helping that victim and likewise sadly it happens in church where there is a huge crowd people love to go but that doesn't mean crowd doesn't mean that people are the true disciples of the lord jesus christ and sadly it can happen in cinema theaters for a movie it can happen in a malls for a particular sale and it can also happen in a church that there can be a lot of crowd but hardly any disciples of the lord jesus christ john's gospel chapter 6 verse 1 sometime after this jesus crossed to the far shore of sea of galilee and a great crowd of people followed him there were the people who were following not for jesus but just because of the crowd just the glitter of the crowd and the power of the crowd attracted them and they were not true disciples they were just over there because the crowd gave them so much of energy you know the crowd worship they would worship the crowd would sit down they would sit down but there was no personal connect with the lord jesus christ the second kind of people fascinated by the supernatural they always want signs wonders and miracles oh miracles are happening there they will run to that place miracles are happening here they will run to this place and very clearly the believers who run after miracles miracle signs wonders do happen in every ministry thank god for the miracles that are happening over here the people are been transformed people have been healed praise god for all the miracles but if the miracle is a source for the crowd to be gathered and the crowd is coming just because of a miracle probably there is something to be questioned about the genuineness of the quality of that believer it should not be signs wonders and miracles that should attract us to the lord it should be the intimacy with god that relationship with god that continuity with god that he is the lover of my soul that we should be attracted to the lord jesus christ in john chapter 6 and this verse 2 and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick see they have come because of the crowd the second reason they came to church or came to jesus christ was a there was a big crowd that was following the lord jesus christ because of the signs wonders and miracles and in john chapter 6 we can find one of the superb miracles of the lord jesus christ what is it feeding of the 5000 people and uh, approximately the historians say that there would have been 25000 people approximately over there and they were all so fascinated by the miracle that they saw with just five loaves and two fishes jesus could multiply it and divide it among 25000 people and have 12 baskets full left over what a miracle i will follow jesus because there's so much of miracle that is happening in my life thirdly the quality of a believer is a is a fake believer if or a disciple if he or she lifts up the minister and not the master we are living in times where preachers and ministers of god are taking the seat of heroism and uh, and celebrity status that is not what god intended for and anyone makes them a celebrity and a hero all of them are not truly the disciples of the lord jesus christ sadly this is what the bible says and when you look at the reality of churches and ministries outside we give more importance to the miracle working minister than the miracle provided by god and where is our focus and where is that we are we are going away from god 
come over here to John chapter 6 verse 14 to 15. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, after they saw the sign or the miracle, the perspective changed. They wanted to make him a hero. They wanted to make him a special status pastor or a prophet. And they said, surely this is a prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus knowing, verse 15, that they intended to come and make him king. You see, special status. By force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. And he went to pray, the Bible says. You see, if we have come to a level where we honor God's people more than how we honor God, there is something wrong with that celebratory status of a discipleship. It's not a true discipleship. The man becomes, uh, makes a mistake. Everyone who is, doing, uh, who is following him or her will come up, commit the same mistake. Our true hero. As much as we should honor, respect and obey our leaders in the Lord. I'm not telling don't do that. We should honor them. We should respect them. We should provide for them. We should take care of them. But our true hero in our life is Jesus is the only hero of our life. Can I hear an amen church? Amen. Such disciples are the true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fourthly, they have no desire for true worship. They don't want to have true worship. It's not a personal worship for them. When the crowd worships, they worship. There is nothing coming from their heart. And such people have to be led into worship. Come on, say hallelujah. Come on, let's clap our hands and worship God. And then they worship God because there is no worship coming out of their heart. And you see what happened. In John chapter 6 verse 16 to 21, Jesus slipped away from that crowd and he sent his disciples across the sea of Galilee and he went to a mountain to pray. And the disciples were met with a storm in the night and they were keeping to keep the boat afloat and struggling and, pray and seeing their imminent death when the disciples were struggling, the Bible says Jesus walked through the water, another miracle. Another sign that no man can do. And they saw the sign of Jesus as a great miracle working man. The disciples saw that. And Jesus walked across the water through the storm. And he calmed the storm. John does not talk about this incident with much excitement. But the gospel of Matthew and Mark talks about it. And Matthew says in Matthew chapter 14 and it's verse 33. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him. When they saw the miracles, when they saw the signs of Jesus, when they saw his presence, uh, there was a true worship that came out from their heart. And they worshipped him and they praised him. And they said, truly, you are the son of God. You see, fake disciples don't worship. They need to be led to worship. True disciples, worship comes automatically when you are touched by the presence of God. When that line of song touches me, when I come to the presence of God, automatically I will get in the realm of worship. Hallelujah. Are we a true disciple? Or are we a defecting disciple in our life? True disciple has no dis worship God. Fifthly, seek personal prosperity only. A fake disciple come to the presence of God just for the job, just for that sickness to go. They want to have enough money, build a house, buy a car. And all they want is personal prosperity, nothing to go, do with eternity. And, uh, and that is a quality of a faking disciple. Every time when they pray, they have a great list of wants and they don't want to say, Lord, use me. I am available. They don't look to God. God, which are the days I have ways I can be useful to God. But every time, almost 365 days a year, they have needs to God. They have wants to God. And they're always seeking something from the presence of God. See what happens. Jesus fed the 5,000. And when they wanted to make him king, he slipped out. Sent his disciples across the sea of Galilee. Towards early morning he went and rescued the storm. And with the disciples he went across the sea of Galilee into the place of Capernaum. Town of Capernaum. 
some people across the sea of galilee who saw the miracle of feeding the 5000 were searching for jesus and somehow they came to know that jesus was across across the sea of galilee they probably ran across the sea as a small sea ran across the sea of galilee and early morning they are going and knocking jesus house and they're telling jesus yesterday night you gave us a wonderful dinner what a beautiful fish barbecue and what bread that you gave us it is so tasty we want breakfast now why don't you do another sign and i just want to have another meal with you lord jesus christ you see seeking only personal prosperity in the lives john um, uh, chapter 6 verse 26 jesus answered very truly i tell you you are looking for me not because you saw the th- signs i performed but you ate the loaves and had your full they're telling jesus yesterday you gave me dinner now i want breakfast i just want it so so beautiful you know it is just not no cooking no going to the market and no hard work we all can enjoy the picnic around the sea of galilee it's time for breakfast why don't you give us breakfast and sadly many disciples are like that lord i want to send my daughter to school i don't have money it's time that you give me some money i don't know how you give me but i just ask you for money lord i need a car it's raining i need a car to go to go to church lord i don't know how you give me every time i have different needs when i come to the presence of god and then it becomes a house and then we are never content and always asking coming to the lord only for our personal needs and personal problems sixthly lay demands and conditions on God fake disciples tell Lord if you give me this promotion then I will give you one tenth of my salary of tithe see conditions of man Lord if you elevate me to that position I will do something in that position to be useful for God you see we always lay conditions and demands on God you see these people came to Jesus and uh, and uh, uh, Jesus said I'm not going to give you breakfast if you go back in verse 27 he's saying Jesus said do not work for the food that spoils but work for food that endures to eternal life Jesus was telling yesterday night I gave you dinner and that's all I'm not going to give you a free breakfast now but I can offer you something now what is that it is eternal life I can give you the bread for your soul your spirit and you will never be hungry again and he said if it's the son of man will give you for on him the father has placed a seal of approval he wanted to give them the spiritual when they came on the second day and uh, this guy said no we want physical food and he is now offering us spiritual food lord let me debate with you and they're telling in verse 28 then they ask jesus what must we do to do the work that god requires god jesus we came to you early morning running for breakfast so that we have we had plans of picnicking in capernaum and going to the beaches and have a wonderful time now you are not giving us uh, uh, that breakfast and you are telling i'm going to give you eternal bread give me the way give me the power so that i can make a miracle i can do the miracle that you did and they are putting a demand on the lord jesus christ and come down to us verse 30 so they asked him what sign will you give that we may see it and believing in you constantly asking God constantly asking God for his power and uh, constantly asking God for a sign to continue believing in Jesus on a day-to-day basis Christianity is trusting God sometimes you will go through trying times in your life sometimes you may go through valleys and you may go through fire as pastor said and uh, you may not know what God is leading you and that's not the time to ask demands from God that's the time to trust and obey blindly follow Jesus because he will never leave you nor forsake you he's seeing whether you will trust him or not in the difficult phase of your life I don't know if you're going through such a phase this morning time and you're asking God show me a sign you are asking me God I don't know what to do I'm demanding this Lord that to prove that you are with me but God is telling you don't make any demands I am with you in your struggle I am with you in your storm you continue to trust me and I will open great doors in your life Can somebody shout an amen amen, amen. hallelujah point number seven 
they have no personal relationship with Jesus. I already touched that when I talked about the crowd mentality. And John chapter 6 verse 35, Jesus declared and said, I am that bread of life. You see, he's saying, if you want to come and feed a breakfast, come to me. I can give you the bread. I am the true bread. And in, in verse 36, the Bible says, But as I told you, you have seen me and still you don't believe. Verse 35, Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus is just telling them, I am the bread that you're looking for. The sole food for your life. Come to me and I will give you bread for eternal life. They had no personal relationship with Jesus. Come to verse 40. For my father's will is that everyone who looks to the son and believes in him shall eternal a life. And I will raise them up at the last day. Jesus is telling, what is he telling? Just believe in me. You are asking for breakfast this morning. You believe in me for your spiritual need. And I will provide you dinner, breakfast, soup, starter, everything until the end of your life. Not by doing a miracle, but I will empower you to receive the needs of your life. Amen? You just got to believe in me. And these people were wanting the temporary. They wanted it then and there. And sadly, you see this kind of disciples who are following Jesus deteriorating. And in point number eight, they, they become grumblers. They started grumbling and complaining and arguing against God. Ones who were, who were Jesus was a superhero. And now in just one day, they are arguing and grumbling against God because he could not do a miracle in the time of need. John chapter 6 verse 41. At this, the Jews there began to grumble. Who are these Jews? The previous day, they said, we will make you king. You are our superhero. Jesus is my superhero. They sang the song and they worship God. And the very next day, when the difficulty came, the sickness came, and they're asking God, heal me from the sickness. God is telling, no, you have to persevere and you have to taste and see that in the sickness, you can know the presence of God and I have to teach you something. I'm not going to take you that sickness now. Yesterday, I provided for it. And then this believer starts grumbling. Oh God, you are not good. I know you. I never thought that you are so mean. I thought that I could come to church and get all my needs. And they started grumbling in the presence of God. I don't know how many of us, when we don't get the needs of our life, and when we don't get the answers to our prayers, have this mentality, start arguing and grumbling against God. Jews there began to grumble about him and said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can now he say, I came down from heaven? You see, yesterday they said, you are a prophet. We want to make you king. And now their faith has deteriorated to the level they're telling him, we know whom, where you came from. You are the son of Joseph and Mary. And how can you claim to be giving what you have, to, what you want to give us? You see, they started grumbling about God. Backsliders grumble about God about the servants of God, about the churches of God. That's not a good mentality, my dear child of God. And they never grumbled in front of Jesus. The Bible says when the Jews got together, some representatives went to Jesus and said, give us breakfast. And Jesus said, no, I'm not going to give you breakfast. They gathered back to their group and they started grumbling. So when they are in the church, when they're worshiping God, they praise God. And when they're away from God, they're grumblers. And these are backsliding believers. When they're with their friends, they become one like their friends. When they're in the church, they become one like the child of God. There should be a distinct lifestyle for a believer and the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know this message has been a little tough. But it has to be preached the way it has to be preached. Amen. Jesus saw them in verse 43. He is looking at them even when they are grumbling and uh, they are feeling hungry and uh, they are talking against them. And he said, stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus said. And these people, when they came to know that Jesus could not meet their demands after walking with him, after worshipping him, probably for months together now, they are with him. 
slowly they start to live jesus and we find the sad sad state of such disciples in john chapter 6 verse 66 from this time many of his disciples turned away and no longer followed him they seek after the crowd they seek after the signs they have no personal relationship with god they make demands on god and they are grumblers if the demands are met and slowly but surely such people fade away from being the true disciple of the lord jesus christ i believe jesus was very pained at this these people followed me i did so many signs and miracles the dead rose and the blind were he seen and I, I i healed the lame man they were rejoicing over me and yesterday i fed them 25000 people with the power i got from above jesus said and now one by one they are living him and his heart would have pained the pain of rejection after coming and exalting him slowly they are going away from jesus christ i believe he was really pained because the next sentence talks about his pain and he turned to his 12 disciples in verse 67 you do not want to live to when everyone went out of the 25000 crowd there were hardly 12 disciples who were waiting all were disciples it came to the 12 and he went to them and asked don't you want to live don't you why are you staying back don't you want to live me because i'm not providing you breakfast and jesus evidenced that pain now we talk about peter as a very mean disciple sometimes he talks something foolish but here we find the sweetness of peter apostle peter such a sweet sweet disciple he betrayed jesus but look at the sweetness of his character he turned to jesus and he said in verse 68 simon peter answered jesus lord to whom shall we go where can i go from you you have the words of eternal life Yes, Lord, my breakfast is not met. There is someone sick in my home. I have just lost my job. But Lord, where can I go from your presence? You have the words of eternal life. It took 68 verses to find a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. 67 verses speak about a fake disciple. And finally, we find a true disciple we have come to believe verse 69 and to know that you are the holy one of god lord we believe you no matter what the pain no matter what the struggle i know that you are the lover of my soul where can i go from you we believe you jesus and here is a sign of a true disciple how many of you will tell that in the pain of your life in the depths of your life when you're going through that pain and struggle and when you go through that dark nights and people accuse you you tell god you are my refuge and ever present help in the time of need where can i go from your presence that is the disciple that god is looking for this morning time i just want to conclude I, I wish this chapter ends here. But God did not let us end this chapter here. And he's showing a prototype fake disciple, Jesus Christ. He's showing us a template of a fake disciple over here at the end of this chapter. And John chapter 6 verse 70 to 71. Then Jesus replied, have I not chosen you the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, verse 71. The son of Simon is Gariot, who through one of the twelve was later to betray him. You see, when he was looking at all the 25,000 people leave him, 
and when he was speaking to his disciples and Peter said where shall we go he was looking at Judas Iscariot because he was God he knew what Judas would do and he's telling one of you will leave me one of you will betray me Judas and this chapter ends like that Judas the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ stayed the longest with him even one day before his death saw the most of the Lord Jesus Christ heard the most worshiped the most he heard it all but he never came to a commitment and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and he walked into the shadow and darkness of eternal fire and judgment and I pray that none who hears the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ comes to church and worships him and ministers unto him hears everything about him and talks about him and preaches on the Lord Jesus Christ will finally one day betray him and walk say the kiss of goodbye and betrayal and walk to the fires of darkness in eternity true disciples are known by their continuity you have a problem in your ministry don't run away from your ministry continue in that place you have a problem in a church don't run away that place talk continue in that place don't jump churches don't jump ministries don't jump friends these are not traits of a true disciple we become losers when we do this we are known by continuing in our relationship with God and God's people in our faithfulness endurance to the end and perseverance no matter what happens being committed to the call and to the body of the Lord Jesus Christ let's pray hallelujah let's examine our hearts is a word that God gave to me as I'm speaking from the series of the Gospel of John I just want you to examine your heart and tell God no matter what happens in my life I don't want to leave you Lord you have the words of eternal life yes Lord dealing with people is tough dealing with hallelujah dealing with ministries is tough yes Lord enduring pain and problems in my family is tough Lord even after following you I don't know many times why I'm going through this struggle but this morning I take a decision I'm going to follow you no matter what till the last breath of my life I want to be a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turn no turning back no turn though none go with me still I will fall of God has ministered to you this morning come on let's glorify the name of God for his word give him a wonderful God bless amen
Praise the Lord.